unfiltered, uncensored, and unapologetic. This is the Retail War Zone Podcast. So, Irish, did you see the mess about um, the collapse of the bridge in Baltimore over here? Yeah, I, I, I was it what was that yesterday or the day before? I, I, I woke up and I checked the news. It was only a few hours old at that stage, uh, and um, uh, but I, well, I was like, I just couldn't believe like the destruction, you know. But then because of the the viewpoint that I seen was so far away, like you don't understand, like it's a thirty thousand ton fucking ship, you know. It's yeah, a, and but, and you know, and that you know has retail implications. Actually, yeah. I mean. You know, I know that I, I had just before we um, hooked up on the Skype call, I saw a Twitter post where some of the stuff from the container ship was washing up on shore and they're like um, animal pelts. <laughs> so people are like, yo, get the fishing lines out. That's worth money. Um, but I, the thing I was reading that impacts, you know, all the things we talk about here is it's going to affect the supply chain because I believe it was now I, I could be wrong here um, because I don't remember exactly, but I think they said it was the 11th busiest port in the United mm. States. So it's going to cause, um, cause they've, they've closed that port down indefinitely. Um, mm. Obviously stuff can get rerouted. It's not like it's the end of the world, but it is going to cause some supply chain issues. And, um, then if you just look at it, I mean, you know, Hero and I talked about it. Yeah, there's ferries, but you have this bridge that has just gone and, you know, it's going to interrupt commerce. It's going to interrupt people's. I mean, what if that's your way to work? You know, it's yeah, like, wow. It's like that's that like that was a like that. That was a big fucking bridge, man. It's like that. That's insane. It was I think it was built in the 70s, but it's like like that 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 will have huge implications now i i knew baltimore had a massive port because um i'm a big fan of the tv show the wire so i did i did uh, know that much but but shit man that like that, that like that's a think of all the job the jobs that would be kind of um reliant on that like yeah you know, and, it's, not, and, it's not just the port workers it's fucking yeah. half of baltimore yeah and condolences to the families of the construction workers that were lost on that i believe uh, you know last i checked because the police got involved pretty quick. Um, Mm -hmm. The only loss of life was the, and like I said, I could be wrong. Um, There, there may be others, but the way the article read to me was the only loss of life were the guys that were working on the bridge. So my heart goes out to those guys and their families. Um, That sucks. Um, But I did see a video where somebody sped it up like to like eight times faster than what it was. And when you see it like that, that is crazy because it. I, I have to question the engineering on this bridge, and I think several other people would as well. Um, would you not, if you're building a bridge like that, like factor in accidents like that? I, well, I, like I, I have absolutely no engineering background. Whatsoever. Neither do I. But, but the the thing is, like, I don't think there's anything you can do. Like, it's a it was a thirty thousand ton freight train. Like, there, like, just don't build a fucking bridge. I don't think you can. I, I don't know if a mountain would have stopped that. Like, those things are insane. Well, like, uh, my first thought when I saw the container ship was like, oh, how much of that's coming from Timu? <laughs> I mean, honestly, you know. Well, um, but it's tragic, you know. Well, in fairness, like my 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 first my my first thought when I seen that, um, I just assumed that there was like no warning. You know, I was like, oh my god, how many people were on that bridge? So, absolutely, all the systems worked that were supposed to work. You know, the, there was a mayday call. The Correct. police came, shut the bridge down. Excellent. Because I, my 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 first one of my first thoughts was like. Jesus Christ, if that was rush hour, like you're talking about thousands. Oh, like, you know, like, we should you know, be thankful it wasn't. Yeah. Like, so, so like, I mean, it's it, it, a lot of the, a lot of the systems worked, you know, it's just, um, I don't know, it, like, but, but that's going to have such a huge implication for like Baltimore city. You know, the, yeah. the, the port is like one of the biggest employers, if not the biggest, I think. Uh, yeah, correct. And, and, you know, it's, and like I said, that'll affect retail. 
Um, speaking yeah. speaking of retail, uh, I didn't. I meant to mention this to you before we went live. Um, so I received an email asking if I would protect sources, and uh, of course, I would. <laughs> but I'm going to send you an email afterwards. Um, it's not something I think I want to get involved in because it involves oh, shit. law enforcement and uh, it, it's, I was taken a little aback. And if that person is watching, my answer to you is this, you'd be better off getting a burner account and posting that on Reddit at like anti-work. Um, or maybe even retail hell. I don't know. Um, that is something that, um, legally, I don't think I could do without some serious ramifications. So let's just leave it at that. Iris, I'll send you that. And I, I meant to tell you about that, but we're going live. It, it's, you know, I understand okay. what they're doing. And the principle behind what they're asking, I get it. I understand. Let's just say it involves organized crime and um, making loss prevention look better than they really are. How about that? And I see. We'll we'll we'll, we'll leave it at that. It it, it was crazy. Uh, and you know. Yeah. Well, you. you it's it's uh, I I like the casual nature of this. <laughs> I, I don't want to I don't want to have to fucking testify. <laughs> right. And and, and so, that, although I agree with the premise of what they're asking, I do. Yeah. So yeah. If, if you're watching, I just want you to know I, I I support what you're doing and I understand. Um. But man, I I I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> and uh, yeah. Well. I, I think we've just got a new a new rule. Like uh, your 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 two rules have been absolutely golden. Like you know, no politics, no religion, right? And maybe no law enforcement. You know, I don't don't particularly no want to no no it, because know. because I can see if 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 I went down this path, I'm getting a knock on my door by somebody that I don't want to talk to. Yeah, because yeah, yeah, you're yeah. exposing something that's supposed to be secret. Um that is a very broad web and uh, like i said i haven't even told hero this yet uh, i just got the email um i'll tell her tonight i'm not going to get involved in that nonsense because um you know number one our audience isn't that big you know like i said if you're watching this uh j-o okay uh, that's what first letter second letter name if you're watching this, our audience isn't big enough to do make any kind of impact anyway. And I really do believe your best bet is burner accounts going to Reddit. Because here, it, I mean, you know, we average on, you know, unless somebody spams Reddit with one of our videos, which I hate. Irish, we've talked about this. Um yep. We, there, there's, there's not enough outreach here. So, if that's something you're wanting to do, like I said, get a burner account and go to Reddit and and let it fly. Just be careful in what you do. But that would be my advice. Uh, and Hero says, "Let's change the subject." Yes. Okay. Fair so, enough. Okay. Yeah. Fair enough. fair enough. So I'm looking and I see that we got seven viewers. Who we got here? We got anybody that hasn't checked in? I mean, I see Hero. I see uh, runs with razors. Um, say hello. It'd be kind of nice to know who we're talking to. Um, but, but yeah, the, going back to the, uh, bridge collapse, that is going to cause some problems. You know, they're already, you know, in the media here talking about, um, you know, supply chain issues and whatnot, and things will be delayed. And, you know, I'm not real well versed on where all our major ports are, obviously. So I'm not, you know, an expert on any of this. 
But when you have one that shuts down indefinitely, obviously it's going to cause problems. And, you know, that's that's food. It's, you know, necessities or whatnot. So if you're out there ordering stuff, just be mindful. Don't show your ass. Don't be a Karen. We got some problems. So just just chill your tits for a bit, you know. It, um, if your Amazon order for your Chinese trinket is a week late, get over it. It's all right. If people lost their life. You'll be okay. So just 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 chill. Um, okay, Hero just said six construction workers are confirmed dead. And I have a friend of mine in uh, Illinois who, is, you know, he's very proud of, of what he's done. You know, he's gotten to, um, you know, uh, the trade area. He's part of a union. Um, and you know, he was really, really affected by this because there's a kind of brotherhood for those kind of workers. So, uh, blame tag. Hello, you're at a hockey game. I fully understand why you're not on tonight and that's okay. Um, he's a hockey fan. Yeah. uh, Yes. Blame tag. Irish didn't know you were a hockey fan during the stream. If you have hockey things you want to post, go right ahead. This is just a catch up. This isn't like a really big huge important war zone episode so just know that if you're listening ufos are coming on chronically random on the next episode so that's going to be like the first week of april and that should be i believe the third is a wednesday i believe um and that's what we're going to do so um one thing i wanted to touch on real quick we did the episode a few weeks ago or, or a couple months ago Uh, about AI and uh, you know if what what kind of news are you getting in Ireland about the advances of AI Irish Uh, it's mostly hearsay like there's there's nothing really um there's no like uh, companies have come out and and have like said what their plans are like but it's pessimistic for the most part like most people kind of uh are just um uh, you know, they just see the inevitable kind of like a lot of jobs will will be automated. So it's just, just like any other time that anything's been automated, except for there, like this one isn't really going to create any jobs. Like there's not going to be a, a you know, in the same way automation, you know, created uh, the assembly line and and you know cheaper cars and all that sort of stuff. This is this is just cutting down on costs for the most part. Right. I, I, I I I can't. I'm sure there are uses for AI that are beneficial, um, but uh, but generally speaking, uh, it's a pessimistic uh, uh, you know kind of point of view that most people would have. And um, and I, actually, some people are pretty blasé about it too. Like it's a bit of a fad. Um, some parts of it might be a fad, like you know the AI images and shit like that. That that might pass, but like the in terms of automating, like. I don't think we'll ever speak to a human on a phone in 20 years. You know, you know, when you're trying to get any utilities uh, sorted or anything like that, you know? Yeah. Well, I mean, all right. So to all of you who've been here a while, I'm a musician and uh, you know, if you record music with a doll, which is a digital audio workstation, you have these things called plugins and it could be anything from, and, and this is going to be foreign to some people when you listen to it and understand, but there's like compressors and overdrives and reverbs and all this other stuff. And now we're at a point where there are plugins coming out that use AI. And this isn't something new. Um, we've had a couple of things online recently in the past few years, like one's called Lander that will quote unquote, you, you can record a song and, and you have it set up and you upload it to this, this website and it quote unquote masters it. And for those of you who don't understand what mastering means, you've got a song, you've recorded it. It's good to go. The mastering process is where it makes it radio ready. Okay. So it's like the secret sauce. It it, it makes it to where it can be played anywhere on any format. And there it is. So from a musical standpoint, bar, you know, the whole 
like I showed you guys where AI can write a song by itself. From that standpoint, it's a tool, okay? It's something you can use to elevate your project. But when you're in a situation where the AI creates your project, that's a problem. And the one thing, you know, that I talked about when we did the AI episode was, you know, for all of us that work in this industry or have worked in like, it, let me kind of split this up a little bit. All right. There's hardcore retail and then there's grocery. Grocery is dependent on the entity you work for. Hardcore retail is all the same. So if you work for a locally owned grocery store, these things aren't going to really apply. If you work for an American owned singular grocery store, you'll see some things. If you work for a grocery store that is, that owns tons of grocery stores, i.e. Kroger. Yeah. That's where this stuff's really going to filter in hard. Okay. Um, we talked about the fact that some of us growing up, we were taught that you want to get into IT, you want to get into banking, you want to get into all these fields that were going to make you the most money so you could retire and have a decent life. Well, as we discussed in the episode, the jobs that we talk about that we're in that may rub us the wrong way or we're treated wrong or, you know, across the board, you know, especially on the hardcore retail side. Um, we talk about the fact that, oh, if this sucks and blah, 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 are going to wind up being the jobs that people have to go for because all the jobs we taught, we were taught that you go to school to learn are gone. And so I found this chart and uh this is from 2023 so i mean there have been advances in the years i mean obviously these percentages are probably skewed but this is which job departments will ai impact the most it information technology 73 percent large impact tasks are automated or significantly altered 26 percent small impact and then one percent not changed okay if you like computers if you if you liked video games this was the kind of stuff that you were taught to go into and and as i've said to some people if you want to still get into tech you need to get into the ai avenue because somebody's gonna have to run it somebody's gonna have to program things i mean that that's, that's fine but uh, the landscape has changed tremendously then you look at finance, 70% large impact, 21% small impact, 9% no impact. So think about that. You're online. You want to apply for a loan. You apply for a loan. AI is the one who's running all your credit reports and whatnot. You don't need a human for that. If all the boxes check, you get a loan. If they don't, boom, you don't. Automated, you get a letter. There it is. Customer sales, and this one was a little interesting to me because when you think of customer sales, you think of people. Um, you know, if you're talking to a chat bot who's trained on cues, there are all sorts of books out there, you know, talking about sales techniques and things like that. AI can be trained to do that. So 67% large impact, 16% small, 17% no impact. Operations, yeah, that kind of makes sense. I mean, there's a lot of operational things where people have jobs that yeah, we probably deal with them all the time. And you're like, why does this person even have this job? Operations, 65%, 18% small impact, 70% no impact. This one was great. Human resources, 57%, large impact, 41%, small impact, 2%, no impact. So only 2% of that career field is not going to be impacted. Now, if you take HR and operations and combine them together, 
You're talking about scheduling tools. You're talking about budgeting tools. You're talking about, you know, you do not need an operations manager in your facility because your company has paid for this software that's going to write schedules. It's, a human is going to have to go back in and re-edit because they're never right. Auto, uh, I haven't ever found an auto scheduler that works right, and I've used a lot. Kronos is the real big one right now. I don't know how Kronos wound up getting the market share of shit, but Kronos, you got problems too. I've seen Kronos schedule. You, you could enter in, okay, this person's availability, and they'll schedule them seven days straight, <laughs> even though the, the, the availability is not there. So Kronos has got a way to go. Um, marketing, 56%. Large impact, 41%, small impact, 3%, no impact. And and these these three right here in, in, in the top one, when you look, IT is 1%, in, no impact, 2%, no impact. The marketing is 3%, no impact. And then you get into the legal spot, 46% large impact, 50% small impact, no impact, 4%. I mean, th these are all the jobs where you make the money. And when you're down to no impact and you look at, well, you're in single digits, your job's going to change. <laughs> so you better be the best at what you're doing or you're out. And you're coming to join us to stock shelves, just to let you know. And then supply chain, 43% large impact, 18% small impact, 39% no impact. Supply chain. Oh, Guess what? That's physical labor. They don't have the robots to do it yet. But for now, humans can be breaking their backs. But what's really interesting is you look at all this, you don't see CEO listed anywhere, do you? There's no CEO that's going to be replaced by AI. And I think they should be. I think they'd wind up probably making companies more profitable. But no, CEOs are not in the list irish what say thee yeah it's um it's it's hard to know um you know how, how uh accurate that's going to be in a few years time um look it, it wouldn't bother me so much if if there was a balance here like for example like if if we globally kind of in the western world were shifting to a three or four day week because AI was making everything a bit easier, I could live with it. <laughs> but, um, you know, it's it's inevitable. It's going to come down the line. It's just how we have, we do have to manage it carefully. And, you know, some jobs will obviously be affected more than others, but like, I don't know, like it, 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 it could probably, I, in the long run, it's probably going to have some ramifications that, that are very, not good for for society um but uh yeah i, I don't know I, I think a lot a lot of it will be um uh in, in the customer service kind of um fields uh somewhat protected but you know because at the end of the day like if you're talking about physical stores there's only so much ai you can do there you can supply chain it all you want but customers are you know, they're still going to need their hand held. I mean, look at look at self-service checkouts, for God's sake. Oh, Lord. <laughs> you know? Um, but what else is there? Uh, yeah, I, I don't know. Like, I, I, I think um, I, I'm struggling to think of, like, a, a, a positive for AI. Uh, I mean, yeah, some things uh, would be easier if it was just automated and worked. But like you said, like, you know, well, Cronus, like, you know, that's how long, that's been going around for decades well still not fucking speaking right. of chronos um eric i hate to break the news to you though and I, I i thought that i knew this happened and i had to go back and look uh chronos and ukg merged in 2020 they're the same company now so <laughs> if you're using ukg you're using chronos technology i use ukg and is it reliable? Uh, half the time the app's broke. 
but it's the same company now. They merged. I hate to break that to you. <laughs> so, um, and that's the other thing. I mean, you have the advent of these companies looking at it as a benefit. Oh, yeah. Kronos by itself was better. All right. So, Kronos, um, I had two runs with Kronos um, when I was, a, when I worked for um, Marshalls. And I also, and when I, I took over the operations there. And then when I worked at the home decor store, which fuck them anyway, um, still mad about that. Um, yeah, the, the, the original Kronos programming for schedules, it was okay, but I will say that, you know, they sold to these companies with a bill of goods that wasn't right. Now, now look, let me preface this by something okay i grew up in a very tech forward family my father worked for the telecommunications industry um i've been there from the beginning yes i'm old the first modem we had was the size of a piece of furniture um i learned how to program on a texas instruments ti-994a and you know, so I followed technology all through the years. You know, as a gamer, I started with the Atari 2600. You know, it, it cool. But, you know, when you follow this stuff from its infancy up until where it is now, and you see something like um, Kronos, you think in the back of your head, you understand coming up through all this, the databases or where you rely on the information. Well, the way Kronos worked was Kronos was supposed to be able, you could take Sally Joe cashier, get all her information, plug it into the system. And she can't work this day. She can't work this hour. She can't work whatever, but guess what? Kronos never fucking got it right. You still had to go in and edit it. And, it's a pain in the ass. It's the thing with with all the schedules. I, I have maybe it's different now that I don't have keys and access to all this stuff. But you know, as far as going up to twenty twenty, I hadn't met one yet that did it right at all. Not a single one. Irish, what what do you use? Excel and my head. Uh, you know, uh, in the past, I've used uh, systems like Kronos, but it's like that. The, the the problem is basically is that it's not dynamic. It assumes that we're playing a game of the fucking Sims, right? So, like, they'll print out a fucking schedule as if there's not going to be any adjustments. You know, um, there's always adjustments. Like, basically, I, I worked for a big box store where they would do the scheduling three weeks in advance. By the time the third week came half of the printout page was, you know, just scribbled over people had left, new people came in, uh, changed shifts all over the place. And then someone decided to run a sale in halfway through week three and you had to reschedule. It's, it's, it's not really fit for purpose really in, in, in that sense. It gives you an idea, uh, of, um, your, your, your schedule, but it, it it's, they're very difficult to edit is what I'm saying. Like they, that, like there's, it, they're they're just a pain in the fucking ass. Um, but w w once once companies get to a certain size and start using these things as if like we're all these little minions, you know, it it doesn't. They they design these things that just work for people in corporate office uh, with looking at Excel sheets and charts, not uh, actual stores on the ground where you have dynamic things going on, like you know, shit in the locality, traffic jams. You know, supply chain issues, weather, all sorts of stuff. Well, um, I, I don't know if the camera's going to show this, but how many of you have used something like this? Oh, it doesn't show at all. Never mind. So uh, to, to this point, there's a reason why all of us old school managers would go on the internet and download a schedule template and print out multiple copies because we have to sit down and write down what we need 
versus what the system would give us. And, you know, it's people don't understand. For the people getting scheduled, you don't know. I mean, as a store manager, you have to visualize your week. And so you have a piece of paper that says, you know, it, most places are Sunday through Saturday. So you've got Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. And you're literally sitting there with all this technology that they're using, okay, that they've invested all this money in because guess what, motherfuckers? I don't care what company you work for. The store manager in that building knows their peak times and knows what their needs better than what they do. So they know their people's availability. They know, uh, you know, what days are busier than others. And so there's this whole thing. Oh, well, I'm, we're hiring you. You're a store manager. You have to use this. You only have X amount of percentages of edits you can do. Uh, fuck y'all. We sit down with a piece of paper. And we write down every employee's name. And we go through and rewrite down the schedule that we need. Then we have to turn around and go into Kronos or whatever and re-edit everything that's done around our business. Um, and it's infuriating because it's like, just give us, you know, auto schedulers, whatever. Just, just screw it. Give us a system to punch in the hours that our employees work and just let us key it in. We're there. If you're a store manager, you're there five days, six days, sometimes seven days. You trust us to run the building. Trust us to make the schedule. Stop this nonsense because it's never right. It's it's it never works. And then you have like younger managers come in, people who have been promoted. All of a sudden, they're customer service managers or whatnot. Oh, you can schedule the front end or you can schedule the stock crew or whatnot. And they're like, do, 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 do. And it's like, oh, there's this automated thing. It'll work. It never fucking works, man. There is no situation in fucking retail where the store manager shouldn't be sitting down taking an entire day making out their own schedule irish yeah it's like in particular with like the bigger box stores like um you know you you have to like yeah you have to fucking forward plan and you 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 do that basically backwards you do it from saturday backwards you know um, oh i love you because you're the first person other than me that i've ever heard say you schedule backwards Thank you. Continue. Yeah, you you do. You you, you, you schedule backwards. That's kind of, I, I mean, even if you don't think like that, that's what you end up doing anyway, you know. Um, but, you know, um, in the bigger box stores, like you, you, you do, like, you, you need to be able to edit easily. Otherwise, it like, as you just described there, it just takes forever to do anything. Um, so, like, you know, if you do need to bring in extra people for something or people, like, you know, change the swap shifts, uh, days off, whatever stuff comes up, you know, you you might have 60, 70 people in this, you know, that you're scheduling in a week. You're going to have 10 percent of those that will be you have to edit. And if the editing process takes like as long as you described there, you're just wasting your time. Maybe that's somewhere right. AI could help, you know. Well, but, that's the thing that. AI, if AI gets involved in scheduling, which it kind of is and has been for quite a while, quietly, <coughs> it, it's still not right. You know, uh, yeah. I, I, I've seen, I, I don't remember which company I worked for that had this. We had a chart that showed um, our business per hour per day. Okay. And it would schedule around that and it'd be like, okay, at 12 o'clock, you're busy at one o'clock. You're busy at two o'clock. You, you start going down three o'clock. You don't need anybody. But the problem there is this, because those same companies that had that kind of technology were expecting people to come to work 
for five hour shifts. Yeah. It does it doesn't go hand in hand. You got people out there wanting, you know, they may hate where they work, okay? But they need the money. They want a full time fucking job. And there's a lot of people, you know, oh hey, come in and work twelve to five. Can I work longer? Nope. The computer says you can only work twelve to five. You know, that that kind of nonsense. And you know, I I feel like if you have to turn over the scheduling of your store over to AI because you do not trust your store manager, you you start to question why the store manager is there, right? It's like, okay, that's one thing you've taken away from the store manager. I mean, how far away are we from having stores that are run by a sheet of paper and there's no store manager? Right? Yeah, that, 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 that could well happen. But, like, you know, there, there are some things that always um, perplexed me uh, in retail when it came to, like, um, the way that they measure things and the way that they kind of, uh, like, because, you know, you, you, you have a... In certain places, especially the big box stores, you have a procedure to open, a procedure to close, and there's check boxes and all sorts of things, right? But one of the ones that always got me was the the merchandising, all right? So I when I worked for the, the biggest big box store I worked for, um, it, it was, you're talking about maybe the store I worked at was about 30 million a year. Um, and I was one of the managers there. So I... Uh, if you were the closing manager, you had to merchandise perfectly. So in the morning, someone could come in and, you know, it would be absolutely perfect. They could just get their the day going. But if there was so much as a fucking toothpick found on the floor, someone would lose their shit, you know? And what what I never understood was the same people that made up these ridiculous rules that, like, you know, you had to be, it had to be photo finish perfect at the beginning of the day, at the end of the day. In the middle of the day, when you had, you know, 3,000 people in a fucking store, the place was absolutely destroyed. There was shit on the floor. There was hangers just loose, missing. Everything. It was just a, a disaster. And they didn't seem to, like, the customers never seen it merchandise well, unless you were in at 8 a.m. or 8 p.m. Right. You just seen the place in an absolute distance. But they still measured like they, they still they, they had this like fixation on the place looking perfect at the beginning of the end when 95 percent of your customers walk in and it's an absolute it looked like a fucking zoo on fire you know it was just um i never understood shit like that it's like you know your customers are not familiar with this well merchandised store but you were absolutely you'll have a hissy fit in the morning at like you know five minutes past eight if you see a fucking paper clip on the floor you know i, I don't know I'm not sure if you're following that. It doesn't make more sense to me. I do. But you know what I mean? I mean, and and that's a good question too. So for the people that are watching, which is only five, like I said, I didn't expect there to be a lot of people tonight. Um, But for those of you who watch on replay or listen on replay, what's it like in the stores you shop? I've got to be honest with you. Most places I go, look like they haven't been recovered slash blocked in days, days. And I've been doing this a long time. You see it, you, you, you know, there's a difference between Sally Joe customer. Who's never worked in this business saying something looks bad versus somebody who's done it for 30 fucking years saying, Oh my God, they haven't recovered this section in like months. And you know, I, a hero and I recently were in a target and I was like, we were going through the toy section. I'm like, they haven't done shit to this in like eons. And I can't understand how that's acceptable other than the fact they have no payroll and they have no bodies in the building. And you know, that is the one thing. Look, you guys that are in, Retail, retail, like you're working for Walmart or you're working for Target or you're working for all these other big box chains. Look, 
Job security is grocery business because everybody got to eat, right? Everybody's got to eat. And I will say where I work, we look pretty good most days. It, 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 we're clean. I mean, it, I, you know, I, I can't say that we look like we don't care. But you go in these big box chains that are making millions and millions of dollars a year and they're cutting their staffs. You walk into the stores and you're like, holy shit, when's the last time somebody touched this? Because it's bad. I mean, I, this this isn't the, the, the most uh, seamless segue, but it just uh, caught my mind. What What is an example in your career of, of just something that is so dumb that only someone in, you know, corporate, you know, in an office could possibly have fucking thought up. It just doesn't work in the store. Was that, I remember one, uh, one Christmas time we got this, um, we got this delivery, like two pallets of, uh, uh, you know, POS, like signs to put up around the store, but you had to hang them from this fucking ceiling, you know? And they were huge, Right. There was, you know, this big Merry Christmas, all this sort of stuff. And what that done was in almost every store that we had was block our fucking cameras. Oh, oh that's so, good. Right. So it just just by the nature of how big these signs were, m- most of the time the signs weren't so bad, but these things were huge. And it might have had the impact. I'm sure that they, they did some like, you know, uh, you, you know, visualization of this and showed, so how good it would look for co- but what it did was it just fucked our cat we had basically no cameras at all for about a month you know <laughs> it's like, it's stuff like that or when they come up with layouts uh, uh of, of certain departments sometimes as well it's like it just doesn't make any sense half the day i don't know i don't know if you have any off the top of your head but oh i do uh, you know so let's right. talk about let's talk about kmart all right <laughs> so i i don't know what fucker thought this was a great idea? So number one, based off of all the research I've looked at, you could have you could thank Kmart for being the company that made it acceptable to be open on Thanksgiving. Number one, all right. Number two. So when I was at Kmart, Thanksgiving, Black Friday. So I had to go in on Thanksgiving night. Now, I want you to think about from a supply standpoint, okay? I want you to think about how much it costs to print stickers, print signs, et cetera. So, and I, I'm probably a little off on this on the time frames, and that's okay, but the principle is correct. So, I went in on Thanksgiving, and I think it was we opened up at like 6 or 7 o'clock on Thanksgiving evening, right? And and I remember being sick because I always get sick at Thanksgiving or Christmas. I don't know why. It just happens. And um, so I have to go in, and we open, and we run this sale that is based on like an hour block. So I may have the times wrong, and it's okay, but just for sake of description, we'll do it this way. We opened at 6. We ran till 10 o'clock. You had four hours of these specials. But guess what? You had to close the doors at 10, get everybody out. Then you had to take all the signs down previously, put up new signs, move pallets of deals, and turn around and reopen at 11 for a whole new set of sales. We'll do four hours again. So that's what, um, from 11 to 3 a.m., you've got people in your building for this quote-unquote sale. Guess what? you got to kick them all out at 3, close the doors, turn around, pull all those sell signs down, and get ready before the big bonanza of Black Friday. And then you reopen and you do it again. And it was a fucking nightmare. 
It is the dumbest fucking thing I've ever seen any fucking retailer ever do. You wasted all the money on supplies to reprint these signs. Move, you wasted the labor moving pallets. You could have just been closed on fucking Thanksgiving and opened it like 6 a.m. Black Friday. But no, you did not. You had a bunch of us in there working that on the very third run our layaway system goes down and I've got customers throwing shopping carts and merchandise in the air wanting to fucking fight me. And it's like, what the fuck are y'all doing? This is stupid. You created this. And if y'all want somebody to be pissed off about being open on Thanksgiving, go fucking look up Eddie Lampert, who was the CEO for Kmart and send him a thank you note. Motherfucker. Irish. I, I, yeah, I just, there's, there's some, there, there are definitely some things that, uh, that like are born in a corporate office that just make no fucking sense. It like, didn't. Although it, it's, it's interesting like that. Some of the, some of the pioneers of bullshit, um, that you have today, uh, are, are shells of their form. Like, like, like Sears, for example, that like they came up with a store credit card, you know, yeah, which is the, Bane of uh, you guys. Now we don't have that. Well, that the name I just mentioned, the Eddie Lampert, he killed that. Eddie Lampert is single handedly responsible for killing Kmart and Sears. Really, I didn't know. I don't know about. Oh yes, it, yeah. It, Eddie Lampert bought Kmart, and here's what you probably don't know: Kmart bought Sears. I think I vaguely remember here, but it's 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 crazy. Like, because like Sears is technically still around, as is Kmart, but they're like there's like four fucking stores there for some right. Like, but, and, and and Sears is in, in bad, like for instance for the mall here by my house, they're all gone. Yeah, and it's, it's it, yeah, it's fucking bad. I mean, one okay. Let me ask you something. When I say Sears, if there was a brand that was attached to Sears, that was synonymous with Sears, what would you name? I don't know. We okay. never had Sears. Sears. Yeah, I mean, and it's okay because you're an hour. Craftsman here in the United States was a right. big deal with Sears. There, It was tools, all right? They had lifetime guarantees. They were made well, whatnot. But when the wheels start coming off the wagon with Sears and Kmart, Eddie Lampert sold all the branding. Craftsman, Craftsman went to a Chinese company, sold off Kenmore. All the things that Sears was known for, he killed. Yeah. See, see that that's the thing. Like I, I, a, a huge amount of your indigenous um, industries – went overseas with that kind of stuff when globalization became a huge thing. And, uh, and it, it had that kind of effect where, where, you know, the, the quality and the products weren't as good and then the brand suffers and then the, the store just, you know, it, it, it just falls. Um, it was awful. Yeah. I mean, Craftsman had a lifetime guarantee that you could walk into any Sears with the, the tool that you had and it was faulty. You get a new one. That's that's how yeah. it used to be. Yeah, I mean, it's just there's nowhere that would do that now. But like, I mean, it's 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 it. I don't know. I I find it interesting. Like just, just some of the, some of the stores that were just like that 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 were trailblazers for some of the stuff that retail now, like are just just gone. Like I, I don't know. It's 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 mad. Like the like uh, like and 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 the stores that are kind of dominant now. They, they didn't. To my knowledge, I don't think anything really pioneered anything other than, you know, buying in bulk and opening in and putting everyone else out of business by scale, you know? You know um, what? I, you you got me kind of fired up. I think what I'm going to do is a future retail war zone is going to talk about my entire time at Kmart. And it's going to focus on my trip to corporate. At I'm Hoffman, surprised you at, haven't done that. I know. I, I should. At Hoffman Estates. I'll get pictures and whatnot. We'll talk about the rented geese and whatnot. But when that company... So, real quick, 
when I joined Kmart, I was under the impression I was going to be a store manager, right? So I was recruited for that. Um, there were the group that I was in was like 13 people. We wound up going, you know, all of us were in Georgia. I moved to Georgia for this job. And, um, the way this was supposed to work, I started the day after black Friday, I was supposed to work in a local store. I was supposed to go to Chicago for training for 14 weeks. And after 14 weeks, get a store. During that time frame is when the wheels started to really come off Kmart and they closed 140 stores and all the stores in our area that all of us were supposed to go to got shut down. And all of a sudden we're like, what the fuck? Where are we supposed to go? And they didn't even know. And it, it was, it was, it was a crazy thing. I mean, I could do an entire episode on Kmart, to make all y'all's head spin um, but that's probably coming. I probably need to do that. So having said that, we're at 56 minutes. I think we can shut it up right now. Uh, thank all you guys who were here, all five of you. That's awesome. Um, we'll get more regular as we go. Uh, I just want to say once again, I'm not real active on the socials because I'm sick of all the bullshit. I hate politics. I hate all this i'm on this side of this and the side of that man whatever you guys need to fucking grow up like just be real people just 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 stop it's it's the most toxic thing i've ever fucking seen and on a chronically random episode i'm going to do a whole thing about the internet how i came up in it and why it's shit now so that ought to be good if, if y'all want some unfiltered bullshit Come on for that one because it, it's going to be something. So before I go, Iris, you got anything you want to add? I'm looking forward to UFOs and Kmart. Oh, we could call them KFOs if we want to. But yes, so to his point, the next episode you see out of us is going to be chronically random. We're going to be talking about UFOs or as they've sweetly done, um, classified them as UAPs. Uh, we're going to talk about Arrow. We're going to talk about the historical report that came out, why it's bullshit, and why it's pl Project Blue Book 2.0. And um, that's going to be a long one. Irish, right? I can't see that being an hour. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's going to be good. I, so I just, I, I'm going to be a kind of a devil's advocate there uh, as well. I, I don't do conspiracy theories in general so like i'm a bit of i'm a just a natural skeptic so it might be an interesting one where we kind of like play off each other a small bit um oh that's gonna be great I, actually i'm interesting i was i i'm genuinely open to all kind of uh things because you know when you look at the very big picture of stuff it just doesn't make sense that we're alone in this vast cosmos but at the same time i'm skeptical i don't believe shit just because uh someone says the kind of thing you know? well i'm going to give you a cheat code okay you know because if if you're on one side of the fence i'm on the other i think it's gonna be great and it's gonna be good entertainment i have two words for you to google you ready all right stanton friedman Stanton friedman okay go check that out because that's where I'm coming from. So it'll be great. So anyway, guys, thank y'all so much for being here. The audio will be up sometime tomorrow or whatnot. This was just kind of a touch base. Hey, we haven't done this for a minute. We'll get into some more substantial stuff, probably going in the next month. Like I said, I'm burnt out on social media. Everything's toxic and everything is I'm louder than you and I'm right and you're wrong and whatnot. It's a bunch of bullshit. And that's why I'm going to do a whole episode on a chronically random about the internet and why it sucks now. So I hope you're all happy. Uh, plant your flag wherever you want. Quit making people miserable, man. Just do unto others as you'd have them do unto you. That's all you ever need to know. So having said that, everybody have a good night. We'll see you next time. Peace out.